Carlos. I'm Jenna Vrablick. I am the executive producer of Food Truck Heroes. Hey, Empanada Guy here. Welcome to Food Truck Heroes. I had the honor and privilege of working with Carlos. He's such a diva. Carlos! Coming! <laughs> Total diva. What's up, puppy? Hey, what's up? <laughs> I was just telling them all about you and how excited I am to be here at the restaurant. And full of a room of red. What you're getting today is kind of uh, of what the, the truck is inside. Well, tell us a little bit about that because I, <clears throat> I know this is what I totally love about the restaurant is that you really replicated the trucks. Down here, you'll see the Let the Addiction Begin, pictures, the fire, everything that's in, in most of the trucks, and the logo. And this is it, man. And we have the floor that matches Food Truck Heroes' background. Yeah, it's the whole theme. That's what I love about it, is that you've managed to capture Food Truck Heroes, which is the web series that we've been working on for right. quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, all the trucks. Right. It's like, it's just this gigantic elephant mm -hmm. of all your passion and yeah. glory, and I love it. It's great. It's a story of my life, man. This is the way I roll. Wow, this Look looks so we, nice. Look at what we have set up I for you. I feel like I'm on a 2020 interview. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this Miss Gigi you keep talking about? I'm the head of the family, but she's the, the neck that turns the head. She let me breathe. She let me fly. She let me, she let me be creative. She was always supportive. That was the key. She never gave up on me. She's never saying, you're never going to build it. You're a loser, you know, blah, blah. You know. She did what a lot of women would not do. Put up with my shit. What did I call you? I called you Rico Suave. Rico right? Suave because I, I had long hair. And an earring. I was 80 I, pounds lighter. I didn't know him. I mean, we went to the same high school, but we were different grades. And my sister, I think, was getting married around that time, and he happened to drive by. He stopped to say hello to friends, and that's when we met. I didn't pay him any mind. Like but, most um, girls. And yeah. then, like, I think a, a couple months later, I get flowers at my office, and he asked me out to dinner. Porque yo soy romántico. <laughs> That's exactly why. That's right. why. I always tell my kids, if you're 50% of your mom when you grow up, I mean, you, you, you're good. I wanted for my kids what I couldn't get. Nurturing and caring for the kids and taking care of the basics that I didn't have growing up. She, she did it. She nailed it. She nailed everything. Leading up to when we got married, um, we kind of did everything our own. Our wedding, everything. There was like no, no help from anyone. We didn't even have a, a, a knife to cut the cake, remember? Yeah. From day one, we always did everything on our own. How would you describe mm. your stepfather? It was a world of uh, inconsistency of my father, my stepfather was the opposite of my f real father. He was a dream builder. He was a risk taker. People fell in love with him. He was just an amazing human being. However, he became a, one of the biggest uh, cocaine drug dealer in the early 70s, into the mid 70s in Newark and then into Florida. Eventually he, he got murdered. He was a peaceful man, a loving man, and yet <clears throat> ran his business with an iron fist but with love and compassion, which was really weird. We had guns, machine guns. We had everything around our house, but never have I never used them. I always thank God for baseball because baseball kept me off the streets. It kept me off doing the things that I shouldn't be doing. But I learned about teamwork, how to play together. I learned about winning. And I realized that baseball, winning in baseball is like life. So as I got older, I realized, man, I still apply those principles to that. Ramapo College <clears throat> realized that I had a major rotator cuff problem and baseball career was going to end. 
at a young age. So I put in for a job working in the human services field. All I know is that I ended up in this room somewhere in Rivervale, New Jersey, in a cluttered office, a really small office for Spectrum for Living at the time, which serves the ment mentally and physically disabled people. But I didn't register that in my 21-year-old head. The guy goes, well, I, I only have this position available, but you have to have some, some experience. I said, listen, whatever it takes, I'll do it. Just train me and I'll do it. I guarantee you I won't do you harm. And that's what started my career at Spectrum for Living. What was it about Carlos that you knew right away that he was an easy hire? He just had a little inner fire, you know, that um, you could see that he had something in him. There's, you can't have more dysfunctional background than I did. I can handle it, Mike. I can do it. And, you know, he was outgoing. He's a great guy to talk to. Still is. Um, talk a whole lot of trash. Look at that mullet. They kind of took a layer all that steel, the cage out of my heart. And then I became like very sensitive to other people's need. I tell you, he's, he's an extraordinarily easy, outgoing person. That's about, you know, the best I can say, or even the worst that I can say. He's a good human being, very good human being. And, you know, anybody here that knows him, um, within the agency that knows him, you know, we'll tell you the same thing. I'm sure Gary probably told you, uh, Gary's crazy. Hi, Gary. Nice hey. to meet you. Hi. Hi, Carlos. This was where it all happened for Carlos. Wow. This, this was his office. Pretty impressive. The building has, as I mentioned, there's about three rooms. There's also a craft room in the far corner. Where, where's the empanada room? <laughs> this whole place was the empanada room. It all started over there. One day he bought in empanadas and I never had them before. And he said, well, you got to try this. And I'm like, you know, this, this is good stuff. Why aren't you selling these, you know, white people in Bergen County? We don't have this. You know, the thing about Gary is he, he's honest. He's, you, you get what you get. He said, uh, it's too much work. You know, like it's just impossible, but you know what happened is I think it got stuck in his brain because that's what happens to Carlos. And he just started off where he started just making them and just selling them to anyone who could go who would buy them. I'd say he did that for maybe about a year or so and then he decided uh, to take off with it. So, best movie ever made though, I tell you. And I told Gary, I said, Gary, you don't realize to this day what you've done for us. Um, he doesn't feel like he did anything. The, that moment when they were in that, in that office and, and he said, you know, you should do this, you should, you know, sell this to the suburbs, he doesn't realize the, the, the direction that he put us on. And I will forever be grateful to him. Forever. I went back home, did some researching, and started putting things together, doing the research. Flour, dough, and all this, the meat. How much would it cost me and, and do the breakdown? And, and then I realized, <clears throat> okay, somebody has to do this. This is a manual business. I'm in a garage, which I convert into a family room. And you see me all the way in the corner. And my wife walks in, she's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm making a banana. And she's like, all right. I said to myself, I'm gonna do this all by myself. Even if my wife doesn't su support me, not that she didn't, I didn't care. I'm gonna do something, and I'm not gonna depend on nobody. I'm not gonna depend on contractors, partners, wife, friends, family. I don't care. I'm gonna build this. I'm gonna become a multimillionaire. I'm gonna build this thing. We pursued a restaurant first, initially. This is back in 2011. And I kid you not, I mean, we went through the whole thing, and it didn't pan out, and Carlos said, F this. We're not going to do it. It's just, it's not meant to be. And I was like, what? And again, this is Carlos being like decisive about things. He says, no, it's not meant to be. We're not going to do it. Screw it. I don't give a shit. We're going to do something else. He went back to the idea of a food truck. That's when you aggressively, he drove me crazy. And he was still working at the airport, drawings of, the, of what the truck would look like. Bro, you're about to make me cry, bro, and I don't cry. Right, stop, bro, let me, let me tell you something. We had a conversation inside of a freight car. He was already in a different level. I'm sitting in the car 
talking about these dreams. And I'm like dilly dallying, you know, playing with my thumb. And he's like, he's full of shit. He goes, Carlos, do you realize that you're inside of a cart, a baggage cart? One Sunday, we were having breakfast at the diner. And you get a phone call. Right. And he placed an order for like 500 empanadas. And we were like, oh my god. Remember that? Yeah. Well, the thing is that if I can do it with one, I can do it with another. So I said, all right, it's, if I can sell 500 here, I can sell 500 tomorrow. Once we got that food truck, we never looked back. We, that, it was like the moment it hit New Jersey and it hit our driveway and it was wrapped, boom, we were doing feasts. June and we dragged our kids in it and they had no summer. They were working, Jessica was nine, 10 years old and she was working that window and the freaking 90 degrees inside that truck. And Jennifer would help out taking care of Jelly and it was, it was heart-wrenching to see my kids there every single day. It's not like things fell into his lap. Everything he's done has been, it's just the blood, sweat, and tears. Everything is an uphill battle with him. He laughs about it and he's constantly posting, you know, on Facebook all these, you know, the good things and, you know, keep on going and he's very positive. Uh, you, how can you not root for a guy I'm like that? Guy here. I am freaking excited. My experience in Lifetime, when I got the email from my wife, she goes, you got to do this. This makes sense. I read it. I said, wow. You know, finally, I get an opportunity to put my product in the supermarket shelf. Being a superhero is a big statement. Absolutely. Have you done anything heroic? Yes. I'm a father. Is that what drives you? Yeah. Every day. Carlos, you are a supermarket superstar. Congratulations. Thank you. This is about redemption. The struggles of 10 years of building my business and finally getting recognized for what I've done. People are fascinated with food trucks. That's why it's so big now. So I said, look, I got a funky truck. I got it. I got a good crowd. I think I can do something here. Food Truck Hero is about the American dream. A nobody becoming a somebody. It's exercising free enterprise. It's people having their destinies on their wheels, you know, in their hands. It's building a business with their family, their kids, everybody in there. And you're gonna see on Food Truck Heroes that it's not only about me, it's about other people's lives on the road. Now, uh, all three trucks are different. They're all designed a little differently, but they're, all three of them are amazing. Over here to my left is the, the mothership which is truck number one. Truck one is managed by Chef Freddy. Well, we built two years ago. It's a 20 footer by eight, pulled by a 350 diesel van. And this is what started the madness. And from here, um, my life changed. Never did I think that it, would get, it was gonna get to this level back then, but he had a vision and I just went along with it. He used to tell me, Freddy, this is gonna be bigger than we think and um, I never really thought of it like that. Truck number two is run by Roy. He gets a red jacket. He just started. It took me eight years to get a red jacket. I got a t-shirt. What makes Roy's truck different? Well, he's got a bathroom. That pisses me off. <laughs> and he loves to brag about it. We were doing a walk through another truck. I'm walking through it, and I open this door, and I see a bathroom, like, wow. There's a bathroom, and like, I want a bathroom. I, I just should have a bathroom. Total stranger out of left field walked into my life and says, I want to be a banana guy. It was one of those things. Okay, so tell me about this thing that you have here. What is it exactly that you have? What is it that you do? And, and you know, he started talking to me about it and I, I was sold on it. And I said, you know what, I mean. Has no culinary experience whatsoever, but has a passion. I mean, you can't put a price on that. And I sold my business and I hooked up with him and it's been great ever since. This was called the Beast. It comes with a 450 engine, gasoline, with a 17-foot kitchen, 
with all the bells and whistles, and it also has two windows of serving. Carlos came to the house and catered um, my son's rehearsal there. And then at the same time of me getting it out of one business, I wasn't really necessarily knowing what I wanted to do, but the paths just crossed. You know? I'm like, dude, <laughs> why would a Jewish guy want to have an empanada truck <laughs> and wear a red bandana? To me, I was just looking to get out of one business and get into another business. Put down some numbers and he showed me what it's all about and uh, I went with my gut instinct and here I am today. Number three is basically going to be the prototype to um, what the future will be in the food truck industry. Not only for me, but for other people. Other food truck operators are gonna realize that the cutaway trucks are the way to go. We have a window of opportunity each day that's four or five hours long. We have to maximize that. So this truck, just like the other ones, are built for speed. We're here to move five clients per minute. A lot of trucks can't do that. This is gonna be big. This freehold location, this Plaza is gonna rock with me here. Hello, we're Pilot Guy here. Today is a day I've been waiting for for many, many years. And the prices are so good. Yeah, we keep it. I'm Nolan Higgins, Mayor of the Borough of Freehold, where your restaurant is located. We're wel welcome you to, to the borough. We're glad to have you. It's a, it's a nice spot, a nice addition to our to our group of restaurants in town. Hey, hi. I'm Captain Woman Chair and Chapter of the Borough. Yes. I wanted to tell you, welcome to the borough. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks, and I hope to see you again. Right. Good luck to you. I didn't know I was going to have a successful food truck business, but I always knew I wanted to have a brick and mortar, a restaurant where I could cook, feed people and create some type of um, trend, and that I was able to do. We're here today to uh, celebrate and support Van Pinata Guy. We enjoyed um, visiting his food truck in the past, and when his grand opening here in Freehold, it was great. He was excited to come to his spot. That's right, that's what happens when you chase the dream. When the dream is big enough, the facts don't count. I've been reading about this guy for God knows how long. The bottom line is, there's people out there waiting. There's, there's a line. There wasn't a line when I was in my garage, all alone, with a four-foot table and a bowl full of food. You know. This is exploding. Why are you making me cry, bro? <laughs> you deserve it, bro. My word gives you everything you want. My word. This is me. You know what's amazing? It's amazing, like you said, bro. It's amazing how, how you are an overnight success after so many years of hard work. All right, we're in Rutgers. All right, this is our stand. I don't know what gate we're at. We're at section 118, 17. There you go. Now